This video will be tackling about historical legal foundation of education. Let me take you deeper on the history of education. Let's start with the education of pre-literate societies. The pre-literate society, also called informal education, because pre-literate societies existed before the invention of reading and writing. People in these societies acquire knowledge and skills through informal education, learning that occurs in a spontaneous and planned way. Parents and other members of the group provide information about how to gather food, find shelter, make weapons and tools, and get along with others. We have education in ancient Africa and Asia. The written language was used in an ancient Egypt which flourished from about 3000 BC to about 500 BC. Priests in temple schools thought not only religion but also the principles of writing, the sciences, mathematics, and architecture. Formal education in China dates about 2000 BC, though it thrived particularly during the Eastern Zhu Dynasty from 770 to 256 BC. Next is the education in ancient Greece. In 387 BC, Plato studied under Socrates had established a school in Athens called the Academy. In Plato's ideal educational system, each class was to receive a different kind of instruction to prepare for their various roles in society. In 335 BC, Plato's students, Aristotle, founded his own school in Athens called the Lyceum. In the 4th century BC, Greek orator Isocrates developed a method of education designed to prepare students to be competent orators. Isocrates' students studied rhetoric, politics, ethics, and history, followed by the education in ancient Rome. So the Romans' education was based on the classical Greek tradition but infused with Romans' politics, cosmology, and religious beliefs. Next will be the ancient Jewish education. So in this period, elementary education in childhood thought the Jewish boy to learn and memorize portions of the Tanakh, especially the Torah. So after the Jewish education, we have the medieval education. In the 10th and early 11th centuries, Arabic learning had a pronounced influence on Western education. In the 11th century, medieval scholars developed scholasticism, a philosophical and educational movement that used both human reason and revelation from the Bible. The work of Aquinas and other scholastics took place in the medieval institution of higher education, which was called the universities. The famous European universities of Paris, Salerno, Bologna, Oxford, Cambridge, and Padua grew out of the scholastics-led intellectual revival of the 12th and 13th centuries. Proceed to the education during the Renaissance. So the Renaissance or the birth of learning began in Europe in the 14th century and reached height in the 15th century. So the Renaissance was a particularly powerful force in Italy, most notably in art, literature, and architecture. So humanist education designed teaching methods to prepare well-rounded, liberally educated persons. Also, Erasmus believed that understanding and conversing about the meaning of the literature was more important than memorizing it. After the Renaissance, we have the Protestant Reformation education. During the Protestant religious reformers such as John Calvin, Martin Luther, and Hildrich Zwingli rejected the authority of the Catholic Pope and created Reformed Christian or Protestant churches. They established vernacular primary schools that offered a basic curriculum of reading, writing, arithmetic, and religion for the children in their own language, while arguing with the other and with the Roman Catholics on religious matters, Protestant educators wrote Catholicisms, primary books that summarize their religious doctrine in a question and answer format. Proceed to the educational theory of the 17th century. Comenius created a new educational philosophy called 
funds of physicism or universal knowledge designed to bring about worldwide understanding and peace. He advised teachers to use children's senses rather than memorization in instructions, followed the Enlightenment education. Now, during the Enlightenment, also called the Age of Reason, educators believed people could improve their lives and society by using their reasons, their powers, and critical thinking. The Enlightenment idea had a significant impact on the American Revolution. That's around 1775 to 1783, and early educational policy in the United States. The Enlightenment principles that consider education as an instrument of social reform and improvement remain fundamental characteristics of American educational policy. We are now in the 19th century in which Swiss educator Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi, inspired by the work of French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rossi, developed an educational method based on the natural world and the senses. Pestalozzi established schools in Switzerland and Germany to educate children and train teachers. Perhaps the most gifted on early 19th century educators was Frobel, the founder of kindergarten. So finally, in 1837, upon returning to Kilho, he opened his first kindergarten or what he called Garden of Children in nearby Bad Blankenburg. The experiment attached wide interest and other kindergartens were started and flourished despite some political opposition. Under also the 19th century, we have the social Darwinism in which a loose set of ideologies that emerged in the late 18th in which Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection was used to justify certain political, social, or economic views. Proceed to the national system education, which includes the United Kingdom, the Russia, and the United States. In the United Kingdom, the Church of England and other churches often operated primary schools in UK, where students paid a small fee to study the Bible, Catholicism, reading, writing, and arithmetic and British Parliament passed a law that gave some government funds to these schools. So in Russia, Alexander II initiated education reforms leading to the Education Statute of 1864, in which the number of children attending school slowly increased. Most of the Russia's population remained illiterate. Peasants often refused to send their children to school so that they could work on the farms. More boys attended schools than girls since many peasants' parents considered female education unnecessary. On the area of the United States, before the 19th century, elementary and secondary education in the United States was organized on a local or regional level. Nearly all schools operated on private funds exclusively. But on the 1852, Massachusetts passed the first law calling for free public education. Next to the national system of education, we have the 20th century education in which at the beginning of the 20th century, the writings of Swedish feminist and educators Alan Kay influenced education around the world. Under the 20th um, century, we have the Montessori, Dewey, and Piaget. So Montessori's method of early education, education, Childhood education have become internationally popular. Trained in medicine, Montessori's work with developmentally disabled children early in her career. The results of her work were so effective that she believes her teaching method could be used to educate all the children. Next is Dewey. So Dewey, the work of American philosopher and educator John Dewey, was especially influential in the U.S. and other countries in the 20th century. Dewey criticizes educational methods that simply amuse and entertain students or were over, over, uh, overly vocational. We have the Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget, in which um, Piaget wrote extensively on the development of thought and language patterns in children. He examined children's conceptions of number, space, logic, geometry, physical reality, and moral judgment. 
So by continually interacting with their environment, they keep adding to and reshaping their conceptions of the world. Lastly, the history of education also involves political influences with the following. The United States, the Soviet Union, Germany, France, and other developing nations. In the United States, local and the state governments have retained most of the responsibility for operating public education in the United States during the 20th century because individual communities often have different educational priorities and different abilities to finance public education system. School system vary from one region to another. In Soviet Union, after the Russian Revolution in 1917, the Communist Party's Central Committee made the important educational decisions in the Soviet Union. In the 1920s, Communist re leader Joseph Stalin established a rigid curriculum for Soviet education that stressed science, mathematics, and communist ideology. In the side of the Germany, the fall of communism has also affected education in Germany. The Federal Republic of Germany follows a joint federal state system of education. The basic law gives individual German states the major responsibility for primary and secondary education. In the state of France, the central government controls most education in France. A federal department, the Ministry of Education, sets the curriculum so that the all students study the same subject at the same ages throughout the country. French schools emphasizes careful thinking and correct use of the French language. The developing nations, the 20th century has also been marked by the emergence of national school systems among developing nations, particularly in Asia and Africa. So this ends the history of education. Now let's proceed to the legal foundation of the education by first knowing what is law. So what is law? Law is a social science that changes and involves with the time society's growth and development. According to Kronos Law PLLC 2019, that individuals are protected by the laws from other individuals, groups, and even the government. Everyone innate curiosity with all this legal, especially criminal law, is understandable. This is about our rights. So we have here the main sources of the Philippine law, which are the Constitution, the statutes, the treats and convention, and last is the judicial decisions. First is the Constitution. According to Hood, Phillips, and Jackson, 1987, a body of laws, customs, and conventions that define the composition and powers of the organs of the state and regulate the relations of various states' organs to one another and the private citizens. Therefore, a constitution is a set of rules that regulate how a country is run. Second is a statute, a set of laws enacted and passed by a legislator. Statute laws appears to be working against us. Legal Information Institution 1992 states that statutes are also called acts, such as the Civil Rights of Action of 1964 or the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. A statute is a written pronouncement of the law on a certain topic. The third source of the Philippine law is the treaties and conventions. A treaty is an agreement between two or more parties to resolve a problem that affects the signators. And a convention is a collection of rules agreed upon by the parties to resolve a problem that affects a big portion of the world. According to Jostal, a treaty enters in the set of rules for the parties involved in the treaty signs this agreement. And for him, convention affects a larger part of the world. It only comes in force when a minimum number of parties agree to the convention. The last source of the Philippine law is judicial decision. Judicial decision refers to reproduce the judges used to reach a judgment. As stated, Corpus 1998, Formalists recite that judicial decisions are the product of two fixed elements, fact, that, fact and rule laws. The judge's decision is the outcome of combining the two elements. As a result, 
and it is a frequently forcible. Additionally, Module 2, Lesson 3, Sources of the Philippine Jurisprudence, will also provide the other information needed to understand the major sources of the Philippines. Moreover, let's proceed to the eight types of law. First is criminal law. Criminal law, as opposed to civil law, is a body of laws that deals with the punishment of people who commit crimes. According to Digman, criminal law deals with the behavior that is or can be construed as an offense against the public, society, or the state, even if the immediate victim is an individual. Examples are murderer, assault, thief, and drunken driving. The second types of law is corporate law. Corporate law refers to all the legal concerns that business may encounter. According to NUVAC 2019, corporate laws are in place to maintain a fair market to new businesses can enter and compete with others. For example, a corporation is a legal enti entity that has right of succession and the powers qualities, and properties that are expressly permitted by law or are inherent in its existence. The third types of law is international law. International law is also known as public international law or a law of the nation. It's the corpus of legal rules, norms, and standards that apply between sovereign states and other entities that are legally recognized as international players. According to legal system, the rules of international law are found in treaties, conventions, declarations, agreements, customs, and other sources. For example, the Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement on climate change. The fourth type of law, commercial law. Commercial law is a broad phrase that refers to a variety of legal services aimed at assisting business in profiting from their goods and services. According to the Legal Education Charity, the purpose of commercial law is to allow commercial activity to meet the demands of the business community. The legal system provides certainty to the process by giving effects to transactions, trade customs, and market prices. The fifth type of law is family law. Family law is a branch of law that governs family ties such as marriage and divorce, child custody, and related economic issues. According to Robinson Solicitors 2018, family law lays out and protects the rights and responsibility of family members across a wide spectrum of situations. Next is constitutional law. Constitutional law is a corpus of rules beliefs, and practices that govern and operation of political communities. According to Legal Match, constitutional law is most commonly associated with certain fundamental rights such as equal protection and the right to bear arms and freedom of religion. The seventh type of law is labor law. Employment, salary, working conditions, trade unions, and industrial relations all fall under the umbrella of labor law. According to Find Law, labor law can also refer to the set of standards of for working conditions and wage laws. The last type of law is intellectual property law. Intellectual property law is concerned with laws that protect and defend the rights of creators and owners of intellectual property such as inventions, writings, music, designs, and other works According to legal resources, intellectual property law deals with the rules for securing and enforcing legal rights to invention, designs, and artistic works, just as law protects ownership of personal property and real estate. And that is all about the eight types of law. And now, let's proceed to the Module 2, Lesson 3, which is the sources of the Philippine Educational Jurist. Good day everyone, my name is Jen Faye Diaz. I'm talking about the sources of the Philippine educational jurisprudence. The Philippines' traditional value of stressing the importance of educational has been codified and incorporated into the constitution and laws of the country. In the Philippines, there are three levels of education, elementary, secondary, and tertiary, public and private, elementary, and secondary. 
education fall under the jurisdiction of the Department of Education or DEPET. While tertiary education falls under the jurisdiction of the Commission on Higher Education or CHED. Constitution, it is a fundamental and supreme law of the land. It is the best principle and laws of the nation, state, or social group that determine the powers and duties of the government and guarantee certain rights to the people in it. It is the system of fundamental, fundamental principles according to which a nation, state, corporation, or dislike is governed. The 1899 Constitution, also called the Malolos Constitution, the first Philippine Constitution, it is expressly provided in Article 23 of Title 4 that public education shall be free and obligatory in the entire nation. In 1935 Constitution, Article 13, Section 5, all educational institutions shall be under the supervision of, of and subject to regulation by the state. The government shall establish and maintain a complete and adequate system of public education and shall provide at least free public primary instruction and citizenship training to adult citizens. All schools shall aim to develop moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, and vocational efficiency and to teach the duties of citizenship. The 1943 Constitution, Article 9, Section 10, the provision for free public elementary education was retained. It is adop adopted by the provisional government during World War II. These are carried over to the 1973 Constitution that took effect during the re regime of the dictator Ferdinand Marcos. The 1987 Constitution is took effect during the pres pres presidential term of Corazon Aquino. Several significant provisions on education were embodied in this Constitution. The 1987 Constitution, Article 14, Section 1, the state shall protect and promote the right of all the citizens to equality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to quality education at all level, levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. Statue. A statue is a formal written enactment ina 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 of a legislative and authority that governs the legal entities of a city, state, or country by way of consent. Typically, statutes command or prohibit something or dedicate policy. Such are rules made by legislative bodies. They are distinguished from the case law, which is decided by courts and regulation issued by government agencies. A statutory law or statute law is written law passed by a body of law. Batas Pambansang BLG 232, the Educational Act of 1982. That was an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. In accordance with section, with section, this act shall apply to govern formal and non-formal system in public and private school in all levels of the entire educational system. Case law, the case law is jurisprudence or case law, is cases decided or written opinion by courts and by person performing judicial function also include or all rulings in administrative and legislative tribunals such as decision made by the presidential or senate or house electoral tribunals only decision of the house of representative electoral tribunal regulatory law regulatory law refers to the law promulgated by an executive branch agency under a delegation from a legislature regulatory law contrast contrast to statutory law promulgated by the legislative branch and common law or case law promulgated by the judicial branch. Administrative law is promulgated by the legis legislative or refined by judicial common law. For governing agencies, the administrative agencies are to create procedures, applicant, application, lic licenses, appeals, and one other important thing called decision-making. Administrative procedure Act is responsible for all the federal agencies' policies. Some states have started following the policies through law or by regulation. And now this is my references for the sources of the Philippines' educational jurisprudence.
Good day everyone, my name is Jen Faye Diaz and talking about the sources of the Philippine educational jurisprudence. The Philippines' traditional value of stressing the importance of educational has been codified and incorporated into the constitution and laws of the country. In the Philippines, there are three levels of education, elementary, secondary, and tertiary, public and private, elementary, and secondary. Education fall under the jurisdiction of the Department of Education or DEPET, while tertiary education falls under the jurisdiction of the Commission on Higher Education or CHED. Constitution, it is a fundamental and supreme law of the land. It is the best principle and laws of the nation, state, or social group that determine the powers and duties of the government and guarantees certain rights to the people in it. It is the system of fundamental, fundamental principles according to which a nation, state, corporation, or dislike is governed. The 1899 Constitution, also called the Malolos Constitution, the first Philippine Constitution, it is expressly provided in Article 23 of Title 4 that public education shall be free and obligatory in the entire nation. In 1935, Constitution Article 13, Section 5, all educational institutions shall be under the supervision of, of and subject to regulation by the state. The government shall establish and maintain a complete and adequate system of public education and shall provide at least free public primary instruction and citizenship training to adult citizens. All schools shall aim to develop moral character, personal discipline, civic conscience, and vocational efficiency and to teach the duties of citizenship. The 1943 Constitution, Article 9, Section 10, the provision for free public elementary education was retained. It is adapt adapted by the provisional government during World War II. These are carried over to the 1973 Constitution that took effect during the re regime of the dictator Ferdinand Marcos. The 1987 Constitution is took effect during the pres pres presidential term of Corazon Aquino. Several significant provisions on education were embodied in this Constitution. The 1987 Constitution, Article 14, Section 1, the state shall protect and promote the right of all the citizens to equality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to quality education at all level, levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. Statue. A statue is a formal written enactment in 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 of a legislative and authority that governs the legal entities of a city, state, or country by way of consent. Typically, statutes command or prohibit something or dedicate policy. Statutes are rules made by legislative bodies. They are distinguished from the case law, which is decided by courts and regulation issued by government agencies. A statutory law or statute law is written law passed by a body of leg. Batas Pambansang BLG 232, the Educational Act of 1982. That was an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. In accordance with section, with section, this act shall apply to govern formal and non-formal system in public and private school in all levels of the entire educational system. Case law, the case law is jurisprudence or case law, is cases decided or written opinion by courts and by person performing judicial function also include or all rulings in administrative and legislative tribunals such as decision made by the presidential or senate or house electoral tribunals, only decision of the house of representative electoral tribunal. Regulatory law. Regulatory law refers to the law promulgated by an executive branch agency under a delegation from a legislature. Regulatory law contrasts contrast to statutory law promulgated by the legislative branch and common law or case law promulgated by the judicial branch. Administrative law is promulgated by the legis legislative or refined by judicial common law. For governing agencies, the administrative agencies are to create procedures, application, licenses, appeals, and one other important 
thing called decision making. Administrative Procedure Act is responsible for all the federal agencies' policies. Some states have started following the policies through law or by regulation. And now this is my references for the sources of the Philippines' educational jurisprudence. Filipino parents value education as one of the most important legacies they can impart to their children. They believe that having a better education opens opportunity that will ensure a good future and lift them out of poverty. Thus, they are willing to make enormous sacrifices to send their children to school, according to Dolan, Didios, and Lacroque. However, with a poor family severely limited resources, Education tends to be less prioritized over more basic needs such as food and shelter. Hence, the chances of the family to move out of poverty are unlikely. It is therefore important that the poor be given equitable access of education. The 1987 Philippine Constitution declares that education Particularly, basic education is a right of every Filipino. On this basis, government education policies and programs have been primarily geared toward providing access to education to all. As government responds in providing access to education for all, there are many educational policies have been implemented like the Child Friendly School System or CFSS by United Nations Children's Fund or UNICEF and Department of Education, DIPED, which aims to have a healthy, well-nourished, free from exploitation and violence from labor, to be able also to protect themselves, to respect diversity, practice equality, and resolve differences. Also, the, Ch the Every Child Reader Program, or ERCAP, which designed to develop pupils reading and communication skill by grade 3. It also designed to improve the delivery of instruction of reading teacher in grade 1 to 3. The government also responded in providing education to our fellow poor Filipino by implementing the alternative learning system or commonly known as ALS. The major goal of an alternative school is to provide opportunities for the students not succeeding in the traditional classroom setting as completing basic education is a gateway for all to further education and vocational training as well as to formal employment. Without basic education, people are vulnerable to extreme poverty. A core component of it is accreditation equivalency which allow learners to earn official certificate equivalent to regular school diplomas through a national exam. For the curriculum in instruction, the National Elementary School Curriculum or NESC from 1983 to 2002, in a series of consultation, seminar, and workshop, the curriculum ex expert identifies the different content skill, and values that needed to be learned by our elementary student. They are they call this competency. Minimum Learning Competency or MLC, Mastery Learning was emphasized in the NESC. The New Secondary Education Curriculum or NSEC, Bureau of Education, Bureau of Secondary Education BSC, implemented the NSEC in the school. The NSEC included the following learning areas to be taught for 400 minutes daily from first year to fourth year. Revised, education edu Revised Basic Education Curriculum or RBEC. The objective of elementary and sec secondary education serve as the official learning goals of basic education as stated for a particular population of learners. That is the elementary and edu secondary education learners. 
The Education Act of 1982, o Batasang Pambansa bilang 232, provides the general objective of elementary, secondary, and non-formal education. BEC 2002 or RBEC 2002, one of the objective of elementary education is to provide the knowledge and develop the skill, attitude, and values essential for personal development, a productive life, and constructive engagement with a changing social milieu. For non and for non-formal education, one of its objective is eradicate illiteracy and raise the level of functional literacy of the population. Features of 2002 BEC RBEC Greater emphasis on helping every learner become a successful reader. Emphasis on interactive, collaborative learning approaches. Curriculum is structure of 2002 BEC or RBEC. The core subject, Filipino, English, Math, Science, Science and Health for Elementary, Science and Technology for Secondary. Curriculum structure for medium instruction. Pursuant to the DepEd Bilingual Policy or DepEd Order Number 52 Series of 1987, the medium of instruction shall be as follow. For elementary education, Filipino shall be used in the following areas. Filipino, Makabayan, and for English shall be used for in the following learning areas. English, Science and Mathematics. For secondary education, English must be used for Mathematics, Science and Technology, English, Technology and Livelihood Education, or MAPE and CAT. For Filipino education, sa pagpapahalaga, for Filipino education, edukasyon sa pagpapahalaga, or values education, or and araling, araling panlipunan and Filipino. Secondary Education Curriculum Understanding by Design Model 2010 The refinement of the curriculum followed the understanding by design model developed by J. Makti and Grant Wijin. The curriculum design has the following elements. Stage 1, Identify or Desire Result. Stage 2, Determine Acceptable Evidence or Assessment. Stage 3, Plan Learning experiences, instruction strength. Features of the curriculum secondary education curriculum. Lean focuses, focuses on essential understanding. Set high expectation. Rich and challenging. Develops readiness and passion for work and lifelong learning. Strength of SEC 2010 or secondary education curriculum. One, learn it focuses on essential understanding, set high expectation, standard base, express in terms of what student should know and the quality of the skill they have been expected to demonstrate as evidence of learning. Number three, rich and challenging. It provides a personalized approach to, de to developing students' multiple intelligences. Number four, And last, develop readiness and passion for work and lifelong learning.